Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Gasoline is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance for Motoring Enthusiasts and the following sponsors. I'm Michael Curzon, producer creator of Gasoline. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back to Gasoline viewers and the new season's just about to start. Tuesday nights at 8.30 and I tell you now, we've jam-packed this season full of amazing cars and even more amazing stories. Don't miss it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we bought this bank in 1975. It was the National Bank. It was built in 1884 as the Oriental Bank. Very substantial building. They shut down 28 banks in uh, 1975, the uh, National. These were one-man banks where the manager lived on the premises. So we bought it at an auction and operated custom rider, custom vans and trucks and restored cars out of it till we outgrew it and then we bought the block next door and built the museum and offices up the road, just more or less adjacent. And they allowed us to build on the street because we tried to make the building, the new building, look a little bit like the downstairs section of the old building. So that's how it come to be. Right now we'll go and have a look inside. This 1940 Ford was built by Eddie Dykstra in Ballarat back in the 70s and I bought it about 1980. We took it Salt Lake Racing when we had a drought year, about 83 up at Lake Tyrrell and uh, it got, we got bogged in the salt and it got badly corroded and we had to rebuild it again. But anyway, we painted it this 56 Ford green. It's got a 427, 390 horsepower, 427, a Muncie four-speed <clears throat> and a hone overdrive. Now the overdrive is incredible because it takes you from 3. Point, it takes you from 3.2 to 2.7 diff ratio and the thing can get about 30 miles per gallon which is quite incredible for a, a car of this nature. So it's a nice car, it's got a hold in front end, it drives like a modern car. My wife doesn't like it because she doesn't like four speeds. She said it should have an automatic. Yeah, this is a 1964 SS Impala Coupe, two-door hardtop. It came into the Northwest Cape Americans brought in was painted maroon. They converted to right-hand drive using an Australian dashboard and uh, we, we had it shipped over from there and uh, we just put a small block auto in it and it's got a black interior and uh, basically it's reasonably original. It's probably not the fastest big horsepower models but um, we're still messing around with it. Yeah, well. The the biggest engine was uh, in this particular model was the 409. That, uh, that was just before the 427s. They came out, oh, the 396s came out a year later. So this was the last of the year where they had a 409. And the others were 327s, 280s, uh, 283s, I think, and uh, they had six cylinders. 
the problem was we started off we start off on a few of these cars and before you get them finished something else comes along that takes your fancy that's that's registered and running and you don't have to do anything so this goes on the back burner uh, and trouble only trouble is this has been on the black burner for about 30 years so but as long as they're kept dry they're usually healthy Part of the styling of the coupe was to make them look like a convertible top in the up position so they put a little ridge, pressed it into the roof to get, make it look like as if it was a convertible with the top up. Not sure of the logic. Hey, this is a metal turning in the anodised aluminium. It's very easy to mark and it's on this particular model but it's very that popular in America now. All this can be got reproduction so if you're missing anything it's easy enough to get. Okay, this is what they call a Chrysler, it's an Imperial, it's Chrysler's Cadillac. When this was built in 1961, this was the most expensive car you could buy in America. It was close to $6,000, that's when you could buy a Chevy for $1,800. It's got a 413 wedge, torque, press button torque flight. Uh, it was sold into Iran, not Iran, into Kuwait. Uh, and believe one of the big sultans bought the car. It's all set up in metric speedo. It, sometime in the late 60s it went into Perth in West Australia and was converted to right-hand drive. It was originally painted white and it's got a sort of a blood red leather interior. Okay, well, when you've, only, when you've got a car where they only built a thousand of this particular body, uh, you'd be battling to get a rear window because a lot of the other parts are the same as a normal Imperial, but this particular one, it's got the stainless inserts up in the roof, it's got swivel seats and quite a lot of features that weren't, you just got to hope that uh, you don't bust anything. It was, was converted by a guy called Terry Priestley and he was a converter in Perth and probably one of the best in Australia. Apparently, if any car come from the East Coast and uh, was converted, had been converted from left to right hand drive, the registration department used to send it round to Priestley to get him to check it out. That's how good he was. Now, it's got a speedo that goes to 200. That's not miles an hour. It's metric. Any American car sold in South America, the Middle East or Europe got a metric speedo from day one. Because when, when it came out to Australia, the guy that used to own it used to tell people to do 200 miles an hour got the square steering wheel, it's the torque flight with the buttons down the side, very futuristic and it's got the swivel seats which you pull a handle and the seats turn out. And this was mainly for women who had tight dresses which were fashionable back at that stage and they could get it in there of the car a lot easier. The park lamps and the indicators are set up in here and you'd think they don't confront anything but they actually reflect down onto this piece here so this sort of all lights up as part of the flashes and the parkers and they also flash reflect onto the top of the headlights as park lamps. It was all designed with this this classic look in the the headlamp set into the body but they don't touch the body they're mounted on the base. Okay, this is a 1932 Ford Victoria. Now it's one of the rarest 32 Fords. Ford built 250,000 cars in 1932, which sound a lot, but then they built 5 million Model A's. The depression was on, so things weren't going too good. It was the first V8, and the Victoria body, I'm not sure of the numbers, but they're probably a very few, th very few thousand. And I found this one, a friend found this on an Indian reservation in New Mexico 
the kids had stomped the roof in and it were full of bullet holes. But bullet holes are easy to fix. You just let them in. They have already got an indent and they take it nice. Uh, there was no rust in the floor. We built the chassis up with a local chassis and all the other parts were all Australian bits. We put a um, Chevy V8, an auto. It's got a column shift and it's got a Corvette rear end and a narrowed Holden front end. So it's quite a nice road car. Hasn't been on the road for a while. I, sometimes they say I prefer to look at them and drive them, but that's about the story on it. Okay, this is a 1960 Cadillac, reported to have been owned by Johnny O'Keefe. Now Johnny, back in the early 60s, was involved in a big car crash when he had a 59 Plymouth and he hit a coal truck. And he was nearly killed, the Plymouth was destroyed, but Johnny said that if it hadn't been such a good big solid car, he would have been dead. And the story is, the next car he bought was a bigger, stronger car and was this Cadillac. It was a sort of a desert rose, it was a sort of a pinky colour. But uh, we've never sort of proven whether, uh, whether that was the case or not. I'm hoping someone can come forward and show us a photo of him standing beside it, but until that happens, it's just a story. Yeah, this one came into Sydney about 19, in the mid-70s. I got it for two and a half thousand dollars. Diablo Motors brought it in. Uh, I'm not sure, it came out of America. It was in very good condition, very little rust. It's got a uh, 292 Thunderbird motor, automatic. Basically it's restored, except it's got Falcon discs on the front and a Falcon, uh, uh, a Falcon heater out of uh, probably about an XY. And uh, we've cut the dashboard and used the American dashboard instead of the Australian one. Just a nice car, Meadow Miss Green, in white, off-white. My father had a 56 mainline ute and I loved this colour green. So I thought if I ever get one of these, we'll paint it green. Because the, half the thing was back in the 50s, you used to see all these American cars in the Saturday evening post and all we had was mainline utes and custom lines and nothing fancy. So it was always a lifelong dream to buy the cars that you dreamed about out of the magazines. And this is probably a classic case. Okay, it looks like a Thunderbird motor. It's got Thunderbird valve covers and dual exhausts. It's a rebuilt motor to 292 cubic inches, which is the same as the Y blocks in the trucks. It's got a, uh, we put a Holden dual system on it with a, this is out of a Mazda truck power booster because you had to clear the valve covers. You couldn't use an XY, which a lot of people do, if you put the Thunderbird valve covers on, which are a little bit taller. You've got the old air conditioning, like a factory air, and uh, it's um, fairly sort of original to look at when you look into the engine bay. Don't forget to check out the all new Shannon's Club. Once you sign up, you can create your own profile, including things like your previous cars, your current cars, the history of those cars, modifications and photographs. You can also search for other members' vehicles, keep up to date with things like news and current events, videos, check out your local car clubs and jump on the forum to talk to other like-minded enthusiasts about your passion. Okay, this one came into Australia about 20 years ago and was used at Warner Brothers Movie World to do an American TV series. And it was painted black and white. It's, it's a replica California Highway Patrol vehicle of the 50s with the stickers on the door. And um, when the movie was over, I found out about it and managed to buy it. So uh, it's all been, mechanically it runs pretty good. It didn't have a light when I got it, 
and uh, we got, I had a friend who found the light at a, it's a proper police siren, come from Finland, the light. The, uh, the stickers on the door, I had to get Ryan to do them because um, I didn't have them, but I photographed one in a museum and he copied them and, and had them laser, cut them out with his laser cutter so that they're a, pretty well a genuine sticker. The running gear is the standard Buick, small Buick nail head of 364 cubic inches. The body is much the same as a 59 Chevrolet four-door that was sold here, if you look at the position of the windows and the height of the windscreen. This is the chips type highway, Californian Highway Patrol helmet that we got at a swap meet. It's got the right little buttons and everything in the blue, so we put it on the uh, we put it on the back shelf. Okay, if you're wondering what this car is, it's an XM Falcon. I was producing it at, as a 1960 when a Canadian called in to see me and he said. I've got a wrecking yard in Canada in 1960. The Mercury dealers there produced a car called a Prontanac, which was really a Falcon to sell at the Mercury dealers. And this was a year before the Mercury Comet. And he, we come to an agreement and he sent me all the grill and all the badges to convert the car into a Canadian 60 Mercury Prontanac. And uh, so we put a crossflow engine in it and a four speed disc brakes and it's in the process, it's what you call a stalled project, it'll probably reactivate at some stage in the future. But uh, that's about it and uh, the other badges which we can point out, the other trim on the, on the Buick thing. Now they use the red maple leaf. The red maple leaf was, uh, Canadian maple leaf was the trademark which appeared on the badges and on the horn rim and that goes straight on a falcon. And this little one goes on the side, on behind the, on the front fender, on behind the rear wheel, behind the front wheel. Plating for all your plating needs. With over 50 years experience in delivering quality to the automotive restoration industry, whether it be bumpers, die cast pieces, polishing and repairs to aluminium or stainless steel mouldings, even ceramic coatings, Modern Plating has it covered. Modernplating.com.au, located 4 to 6 King Street, Oakley, Victoria. Remember, Modern Plating, when quality matters. Okay, it's a 1956 F100. I bought it, it was a one owner in 1970. And then in the next 10 years, we put a twin I beam, late twin I beam F100 front end with disc brakes and a big block Corvette engine, 427, turbo 400. And um, it's got a Cadillac interior. We run it for three or four years. Then we had five kids, so we couldn't fit them all in. And it's been in storage since then in the museum and just going back on the road now. Okay, well the interior's been customised slightly. We've got a Cadillac Tele tilt column. We've got the old Mustang type 60s air conditioning, which is a Ford unit. We've got the uh, Cadillac bench seat. It's an eight-way power bench. We've got the spotlight and a little bit of extra gauges and it had an overhead console, which we're still working on with the CB radio, which was popular back in the 80s when it was first done, including a bubble top sunroof. We had a load of magazines on coming back from Melbourne and uh, 
my back was uh, pointing up and uh, the guy who sent me in front of me, Kenworths had got them on the top of their trucks. You probably notice they can control them too. So as I, as I passed him, he, uh, he was complaining on the CD about me and he, he shone me light in the mirror. So then I just turned this around like this and shone it back at him and that's, that sort of made him turn his lights off. But it was an interesting little escapade that went on there for a minute or two. This uh, HZ Holden panel van might interest viewers. It was built in the 80s. It was called Inner Visions and it's owned by my son uh, Kyle who got it about six or eight years ago. Come from Newcastle up in uh, New South Wales. Got a blowing uh, small block Chevy. The fellow spent about $80,000 on it in 19, in, the, in the 80s, which would be about 300000 on today's money if you went to do the same thing. Back in the 80s on custom van and trucks, we did custom van and trucks for a number of years. We were the top selling van magazine at the time. And in number 33, we did a story on Inner Visions, which is the van here, came out of New South Wales. And this was how it was back then in, uh, when it was first built. And of course, it's had a few additions done since then. Which The car was built for the show circuit, uh, was in the top five pretty much right through the van days and then he uh, put, it, put it in his garage and covered it up and I think his wife wanted some money for a new kitchen and Kyle ended up getting it for a fraction of the price and it's never been on the road although I think Kyle's getting the carbs fixed up now to put it back on the road for occasional run just on limited registration. With this engine, it's a 350 Chevy with the 671 GM blower manifold uh, with a blower on with twin hollies, four barrel hollies, hooked up to the, uh, of course everything's chrome plated in the typical show fashion and the murals on the inner fenders. About a year or so back they decided to give it a run but it ran okay but the, the carbs had dried out because being a show vehicle uh, it just leaked at the gasket so he's had the carbs off to get them rebuilt but I don't think it's going to see too many miles though. Well the workmanship is great because the car's all steel and even this you can put a fridge magnet on and it'll stick to it. The only fiberglass is in the spoiler up the back so the bodywork is just brilliant.
and we'll see you next week on Gasoline. Gasoline is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance for Motoring Enthusiasts and the following sponsors. I'm Michael Curzon, producer-creator of Gasoline. Hope you enjoy.